Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole and today we are looking at 10 items that you may have overlooked when going through the new build process for your new home. Now these are items that I myself have either made sure to go out of my way to look into or unfortunately things that I have missed myself. So they're ones that I'm seeing now and thinking, I really wish I had thought of that earlier. Obviously we are way too far in the process to do anything about it now. So hopefully if you are in that new build process, this is something that can help you. Now, while I go through this list, I want you to keep in mind that just because these are things you want, it's not necessarily something that your builder will be able to provide, but we don't know until we ask. A lot of these, they probably can. It will vary builder to builder, but it's always worth the ask to get these things out of the way before you start getting further into the process, definitely before you move in. Anything that can be done on the front end will make it a little bit more of a seamless transition. If that sounds good to you, go ahead, give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's jump on in. So number one, we're gonna start with the exterior of the home. So a lot of times when we're doing this new build process, we're excited for the design center. We wanna think about all of the things that happen inside but you wanna think about the outside just as much. It is your first impression when you do get up to the house. It's the first thing that everybody sees. And typically it's just not something that we think about too often. So a couple of the things that I would have loved and I am kicking myself for not having thought of. Shutters, not something I love. Realized that kind of early on in the process, but still a little bit too late. So think about, do you like shutters? Do you wanna have them on all of the windows? A couple? maybe not at all. If you don't want shutters, you probably want that nice thick trim along your windows. Is that an option that your builder can do? Now everything pretty much of the outside of the home, the aesthetic of the home, that first glance, is just not something that I took the time to really think about. Sure, the color, but that was about it. It wasn't much beyond that. And there are other things that you can think about here too. A couple of the homes in our neighborhood are doing this really lovely two-tone outside, which is so beautiful. And again, something I wish I had just kind of thought of. There's one house in particular kind of across the street from us that have this really gorgeous you know, white and dark, dark gray that make for this really nice contrast. And not only that, but they have some of the siding going not horizontally, but vertically in some sections. Now, this is something that I haven't seen a lot of personally. There's actually a couple homes in the neighborhood that are doing this. But again, it's a look that is a little bit different, not something I would have thought of myself, but absolutely something I would have loved to consider at the time when we made this decision, oh gosh, way back in November of 2020. So definitely do all of your research see what your kind of dream ideal is and bring that to your builder. This is going to be on that kind of first signing date. So this is before any of your design center appointments for the outside of the home. So really go in after you decide that yes, you want to purchase in this neighborhood with this builder, have that ready to go as soon as you're ready to put your name on that dotted line. Sticking with the outside, one of the things that was a must for us is a rear covered porch. Now we had a little bit of a patio area before at our previous home that we did build out later, but having that covered area that's going to help a little bit from the elements and really help to utilize that space a little bit more is something we were absolutely ecstatic about. And again, it was kind of a must have, and it's not something that was typically offered for this home style. So we knew going in that this was something we really wanted and just made the ask. They were very flexible and absolutely could do it. It was offered on a couple of other homes, but not of this model. But if it is something that your builder does offer on other models, it's likely something that they at least have the blueprints for somewhere, but you might be able to get away with a couple of these things. Just because it's something that maybe they don't typically do, doesn't mean it's necessarily off the table. So always better to ask. Number three, we are gonna talk about extra insulation. So we've gone from the outside, we've moved a little bit further in. All of the exterior walls are insulated for very obvious reasons, but the interior walls, you can add a little bit of extra insulation there, typically for things like soundproofing. Now I won't get into this too much, I'm just going to say bedrooms, bathrooms might be worth looking into, but also if you have say a music room and you're trying to dampen the noise a little bit from going everywhere else into the home, if you're trying to provide a little extra privacy, or sometimes just to make sure that the home is a little bit more insulated than it might be otherwise, 
that's definitely something that you can look into that is not going to come standard but might be worth your time to ask about. Moving a little bit more into the interior of the home from there, we're looking at either cased or framed openings. Now from the floor plan, that is, you know, whatever the model and style of home that you choose, those will typically already be laid out. But one of the things that, again, I wish I had thought of, we have a lot of the cased openings in a couple of places. I'll try to put some pictures up here from some of the models of this version of home. And what I would have loved to see here is instead of having these squared off cased openings or even the arched case opening, is just to have an arched framed opening. Arches, curves, all of that coming back in a big way. And this is not to be trendy. Obviously trends come and go and you don't want to go too far into a certain you know trend that is so now that is really going to start to date itself pretty soon, probably sooner than we would like to see. Choosing something that, yes, it is trendy right now, but arches are timeless. They have been around in architecture since the existence of architecture. So if something's been around for a couple thousand years, I'm pretty confident it'll stand up for the next, say, 20. But this kind of softening of the wall spaces, of how you get from one room to another, might be something that you're interested in that just didn't even think about. Again, I know it's something that I really wish I had. And while I don't hate those very clean lines of our, you know, squared off cased openings, it is going to be something that I know I'm going to look at a couple times after we move in and just think, what if? Still talking about walls for this next one, maybe you can remove or add a wall depending on what it is you're looking for. Now, I know a lot of people are saying the open concept home is dying. I don't believe that for a second. I think we do want a little bit more division in our spaces and it's nice to have those separate areas of your life since we are in the home so much more now. But I am very happy to see these still larger open areas with the kitchen flowing into the family room. You can still see a dining room from there. Just having all of that, they can still section off and they can be independent of each other, but just opens up the space. I just feel like I can breathe better. So if you think about originally kitchens were very cut off from the rest of the home, that's not something that I personally would like to see happen again. I think it's a little bit too small, too closed off. And I like just the thought process behind being open about where your food is prepared. The kitchen truly is the heart of the home and having it in a place where most people gather, I think just makes sense. But if that's not for you, you can look into having any type of walls put up. Or if you're like me and you want to see even more walls taken down, something that we like to do is have a loft area in the upstairs. One of the things that I've always just felt a little uncomfortable with is when you go up the stairs and you're you know finally going into the bedroom level and everything is just a hallway with doors. It just seems so small, so closed off, and I just, I don't like that feeling again that whole feel like i can take a deep breath is something that i keep coming back to but we typically like to have a loft area near the top of the staircase so that when you do take that turn and you are on that upper level there's still this nice broad area it's somewhere else that you can kind of style and have some fun with and it's just it's not just hallway so same thing here with our builder this was not typically an option that was just you know put out there when we were looking at how the design of the home was going to look, but it's something we asked for and it wasn't anything that was difficult for them to do. Now we are fully in the home. We just talked a little bit on the kitchen. We're gonna stay there for a second. One of the things you really wanna think about is storage. That's gonna be the entirety for this one. <laughs> storage is your friend. It's really difficult to add in where there isn't any. So you want to make sure you do have that ample storage space. Take your cabinets up to your ceiling in some places. You don't necessarily need it for everywhere. I know some people really like that open shelving. You can have a mix of both, but it is so much more difficult to run into not having enough storage than having too much storage. This is also going to go for your bathrooms. You want to make sure that you have enough cabinet space, enough drawer space, all of that. Also for your closets. These are the areas that you wanna make sure that you maybe invest in a little bit if it's not something that comes standard with whatever type of home build you're looking at. Really think about how that space is going to be utilized. Really look into what type of cabinetry, what type of drawers, and see if you feel like you need to add anything anywhere. Storage is just, I, I cannot emphasize the importance of storage enough. Now bringing it back into that kitchen for this next piece, 
not just storage, but making sure that you have a couple different options in your cabinetry. So some of those lower cabinets, they can get really deep and then we don't use them properly because it's hard to get to. Things can get lost around corners. Things can get lost all the way in the back. Think about things like roll out shelves. These are going to make your life easier to make sure that you're utilizing the whole space and not having to get down on your hands and knees to dig anything out of a weird corner. So not just cabinets, just make sure drawers, make sure pull out cabinets as well, or those rolling cabinets. So we definitely added a couple of these throughout our kitchen. The other thing is to really think about the placement of these. So this is something that we didn't think about as much is where exactly was this going to make the most sense? So you almost have to plan out where you wanna put everything in your kitchen before you even go to the design center. I know it seems like a lot and there's so many other things going on, but this is going to make your life so much easier when you are finally moving in and you go to unpack everything, having a flow that makes sense, having shelving, drawers, pulls, all of that, that work with your lifestyle, is going to make this so much easier. This also goes along with your trash can. So we have the little pull out, the little pull out thing from Amazon, I believe. They did offer a built-in option. It was more expensive. It didn't seem like it was something that was necessary because we already did have this little pull out canister. But now we had to think about where is this going to go? Which cabinet is large enough to fit this? Or if we needed to get a different one, where does it make sense? What are the cabinet sizes? Just to make sure that, again, the flow makes sense. This next one is something I did mention in the electrical video, which I'll leave a link for right up here. And that is going to be extra outlets. I'm going to say primarily for the kitchen, but this will go for anywhere. Again, one of my wish list items that I realized too late is that we don't have any outlets in our pantry. Now, I would have loved to put some of our smaller appliances in there and have them actually be workable or even something like our dog and cat have this like swanky little water fountain bowl that you know circulates the water, keeps it cool, filters it, all of that. Having it underfoot somewhere out in my new beautiful kitchen is kind of going to clash with the decor. Now, obviously my fur babies come first and will be somewhere very accessible, but something I thought about was my pantry, I'm first of all going to organize it, which will be a future video when we do get in. Very excited for that. But I do imagine the pantry door being pretty open for the most part because of especially where it is in the kitchen. So that would have been a great spot to kind of tuck that pet water fountain out of the way. Still very accessible for the both of them, but it's not as evident when you walk in the kitchen. It's not just kind of staring you in the face. I know that was a little bit niche, but just things like that that thinking about too late could have been solved very easily if I just thought, you know, throw in an extra outlet or two here when we had sat down for that electrical appointment would have streamlined things a little bit. Some other things I mentioned in that video that also just make sense here, ceiling fan pre-wires in all the bedrooms. This is going to help for you now or for your resale value at least. Pendant lights over the kitchen island. Not only are they helpful for being a task light, but they make so many beautiful ones. This is somewhere that is almost vital to make a statement in your kitchen at this point, I feel. And it's just, you can have fun with it. It makes sense. It has a proper function. It is useful. And it's something that you can really bring the personality in. They can really elevate your style. There's essentially no reason other than of course, cost, which has to come first to not do that if it's something that you can do. Next up, the shower head height. So I'm 5'5", not really a problem for me. My husband is 6'4", so typical things are just not made for a tall person. So we did get the shower head height up to seven feet, and that is something that he was very excited about and something that, again, it's not normal to come in just going into the meeting, but it is something that's easy for them to do that isn't going to cost you too much extra. Our final piece for today is going to be fireplaces. So ideally you can have one in your family room or somewhere on the main level. And then I would also consider doing this in your primary bedroom. Now, obviously fireplaces are not cheap, so this is definitely something that you have to think about, really go over your budget and make sure that it does make sense. But having a fireplace in the home is something that, you know, if and when you do go for that resale value is going to help bump up the price of your home a bit. They make a great focal point. They are useful. They are beautiful. There are so many reasons to have one that again, if it's in your budget, if it is something that is manageable for you, highly recommend there. 
So those are the 10 options that you may have overlooked for your new build home. Again, some of these are ones that we did think about thankfully beforehand. Others are ones that I wish we had thought of a little bit sooner, but I do hope these are helpful for you, especially if you are getting started in this new build phase and maybe it's not too late and it's just something you can consider that will be helpful for you in the long run. If you did find this helpful, go ahead, give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Other than that, I can't wait to see you in the next video. Until next time, bye.